Hi and welcome to my channel. So in today's video we are going to learn how to use the object in a sentence. So if you're sometimes not really sure into which case you have to put the object of a sentence, then this video is going to be perfect for you. Most of the time the object in a sentence appears either in the partitive case, in the genitive case or in nominative singular or plural. So let's start figuring out when our object has to stand in the partitive case. So when we have a negative sentence, we have to put our object into the partitive case. Here's one example. Minula eole autua means I don't have a car. So our object here is the car, which is in Finnish auto. And because this sentence is a negative one, we have to put the car into the partitive case, which is why auto becomes autua. So let's repeat. Minula eole autua means I don't have a car. Let's take a look at another example. Mina en osta utta veneta means I don't buy a new boat or I'm not going to buy a new boat. So our object here is the boat, which is vena in Finnish. And because we also have here a negative sentence, we have to put our object, which is the boat, into the partitive case, which is why vena becomes veneta. And then we also have the word utta here which is the partitive case of uusi, which means new. And it's standing here in the partitive case because it's referring to the boat in a negative sentence. So that is why uusi becomes utta. So let's repeat. Mina en osta utta veneta means I'm not going to buy a new boat. The partitive is also used when we're talking about an ongoing action. Here's one example. Mina luen kirja means I'm reading a book. So our object here is the book, which is Kyria in Finnish. But what this sentence actually tells us is that I'm reading the book right now in this very moment. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to finish the whole book. All that matters is that I'm reading the book right now. So that is why Kyria has to stand in the partitive case here. So let's repeat. Mina luen Kyria. I'm reading a book. Next example. Mina syön omena means I eat an apple. Our object here is the apple, which is omena with one A in Finnish. And I'm eating the apple right now in this very moment. So that means we have to put the apple, which is omena, into the partitive case. So that is why omena becomes omena with two A's. It's the partitive case. So let's repeat. Mina syön omena means I'm eating an apple. The object can also appear in the partitive case when we're talking about something that is uncountable. For example, ulossa on vetta means there's water in the bottle. So our object here is the water, which is vesi in Finnish. And because water is uncountable, we have to put it into the partitive case. So that is why vesi, which means water, becomes vetta which is the partitive case of vesi. So let's repeat. Pulosa on vetta means there's water in the bottle. Let's do another example. Mina ostan leipa means I'm buying bread. So here our object is bread, which is leipa in Finnish. And since I don't know yet how much bread I'm going to buy, so all I know is that I'm going to buy bread, we have to put leipa into the partitive case, which is why leipa becomes leipa with two s. It's the partitive case. So let's repeat. Mina ostan leipa. I'm buying bread. Then our object can also stand in a partitive case after specific verbs, which we call partitive verbs. Here's one example. Mina rakastan porkanoita means I love carrots. So here our object is porkanoita, which means carrots. It's the partitive plural of porkana, which means carrot. Here we use the partitive plural because the verb, which means to love, requires the partitive case. It's a so-called partitive verb. And then we also use it because we're talking about loving carrots. So we are talking about carrots in general, not about specific carrots. So that is why we say mina rakastan porkanoita, which means I love carrots. 
Let's take another example. Mina orotan busya means I'm waiting for the bus. So our verb here is orota, which means to wait. And orotan here in this example is the first person singular present tense of orota, which is a partitive verb. So that means our object, which is the bus here, has to appear in the partitive case, which is why busi becomes busia. So let's repeat. Mina orotan busia means I'm waiting for the bus. All right. Now, let's figure out when our object has to appear in the genitive case. So, the object has to stand in a genitive case when we're talking about a thing as a whole. Here's one example. Mina sion omenan means I'm eating an apple. Here our object is the apple, which is omena in Finnish. And with this sentence we express that we are eating an apple, but also going to finish it. So, our intention is to eat the whole apple. So this is why the apple has to stand in the genitive case. So omena becomes omenan, which is the genitive case of omena. So let's repeat. Mina sion omenan. I'm eating an apple in the sense of I'm gonna finish it. Let's do another example. Aki osta auton means Aki is buying a car. So here our object is the car which is auto in Finnish. And since Aki is buying the car as a whole, as one piece, so not just part of it, but the whole car, we have to put the car into the genitive case, which is why auto becomes auton. So let's repeat. Aki osta auton. Aki is buying a car. Then we also use the genitive case for our objects when we're talking about finishing something. For example, mina luen kirjan means I read the book. So here our object is Kyria, which is book in Finnish. And since we want to say that we are going to read the book till the end, so we are going to read all the pages of the book, we have to use the genitive case for our object. So that is why Kyria becomes Kyrian here. Let's repeat. Mina luen Kyrian. I read the book. Then the genitive case is also used for objects when the process is finished or when the action is done. For example, Austin Eilan Takin means yesterday I bought a jacket. So our object here is the jacket, which is Taki in Finnish. And since the process is finished, so I bought the jacket and now I have it. Plus, we are also talking about one jacket as a whole. We have to use the genitive case here. So that is why Taki, which means jacket, changes to takin here. So let's repeat. Austin Eilan takin. Yesterday I bought the jacket. Then an object can appear in the genitive case after certain verbs. Here's one example. Mina tapan matin sunontaina means I'm going to meet Matti on Sunday. So here we have the verb tavata which means to meet. And because of this verb Mati, so the person I'm going to meet on Sunday, has to stand in the genitive case. So that is why Mati becomes Matin here. Let's repeat. Mina tapan Matin sunontaina means I'm going to meet Mati on Sunday. Let's have one more example. Nein pekan kirjastossa means I saw Pekka in the library. So the basic verb here is nehda which means to see. This verb requires the object in the genitive case. So that's why Pekka changes to Pekan. So let's repeat. Nein Pekan kirjastossa. I saw Pekka in the library. Now let's learn when the object stays in nominative singular. When we have an imperative sentence, the object stands in a nominative singular. Here's one example. Anna minulle gönä means Give me a pen. So Anna here is the second person singular present imperative of anta, which means to give. And so because this is an imperative sentence, the object, which is the pen, needs to stand in a nominative singular. Let's repeat. Anna minulle gönä means give me a pen. Let's take another example. Ota sateen varjo mukaan means take the umbrella with you. Ota means take. It's the second person singular present imperative. So that is why our object, which is 
the umbrella stays in the nominative singular. So, let's repeat. Otta satteen varjo mukaan means take the umbrella with you. Now let's move on to our next topic about objects in passive sentences. Here's one example. Tilataan pizza means let's order pizza. Tilataan is the passive present of the verb tilata, which means to order. So that is why our object, which is the pizza, keeps standing here in the nominative singular. Tilataan pizza. Let's order pizza. Let's do another example. Talo malataan ensi viikolla means the house is going to be painted next week. So malataan here is the passive present of the verb malata, which means to paint. And since we have also here again a passive sentence, the house, which is talo in Finnish, stays here in the nominative singular. Let's repeat. Talo malataan ensi viikolla meaning the house is going to be painted next week. And now let's see how it works with objects in necessity sentences. Here's one example. Minun täytyy osta uusi tietokone means I have to buy a new computer. So since we have a necessity sentence here, that means a sentence which expresses that we have to do something, our object has to stand in the nominative singular. So that is why Tietokone, which means computer, stays the same. So let's repeat. Minun täytyy osta uusi tietokone, means I have to buy a new computer. Let's do one more example. Minun pitää korjata televisio, means I have to repair the television. Also here we have a necessity sentence, so that's why the television stays here in the nominative singular, which is Televisio. Let's repeat. Minun pitää korjata televisio. I have to repair the television. All right, now the object can also appear in nominative plural. When? Let's figure it out. Mina diskan astiat means I'm doing the dishes. So the interesting word for us here is astiat. It's the nominative plural of the word astia, which means dish in the sense of spoon, plate, and so on. And since we want to say that we are cleaning all the dishes which we just have used before, we have to use the nominative plural. So that is why we say Mina diskan astiat. I'm doing the dishes. Here's another example where we put the emphasis on specific things in plural. Mina ottan nuo gänget means I take those shoes. Here I exactly know which shoes I'm going to take, so we also need here the nominative plural. That is why we say Mina otan nuo gänget. I take those shoes. By the way, gänget is nominative plural. Alright, now we move on to a different topic. Personal pronouns as objects. Here's one example. Mina tapan henet videlta means I'm going to meet him or her at five. Hennet means him or her in English. So basically we can say that the personal pronouns appear in their own forms when we're talking about objects. Let's just quickly see how the personal pronouns look like when they've become the object. So mina becomes minot. Sina becomes sinot. Hen becomes hennet. Me becomes meidet. Te becomes teidet. And he becomes Hey that. Let's do another example. Aki vie sinut autola koulun means Aki brings you to school by car. Whom does Aki bring to school? He brings you to school. And when we look at our personal pronouns list from before, sina becomes sinut. So that is why we say Aki vie sinut autola koulun. Aki brings you to school by car. But Personal pronouns can also appear in the partitive case. As already mentioned before at the very beginning of this video, when we have a negative sentence, we need the partitive case. For example, en tunne hente means I don't know him. Hente is the partitive case of hen. And since this is a negative sentence, we need the partitive case for our personal pronoun. En tunne hente. I don't know him. 
Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and want to learn more Finnish, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.